Today I'd like to show how I edit portrait uh, photos in completely free software, uh, raw therapy, and AMP. Uh, all of these shots were taken on the Canon EOS R using the 85mm f1.2. Um, and this is sort of assuming that you have a bunch of shots all in one location. So uh, if you have all in one location and all with the same settings, you can very quickly edit one photo and then apply those edits to an entire series. If that's not the case, I can also show how to just apply the settings one by one uh, in RAW therapy um, from one photo to another. So uh, this is not the best, necessarily the best photo in this series, but this is the one I'm going to start with just to get um, all of the, the base settings done. So. If you're not familiar, raw therapy is similar to Lightroom from Adobe in that it is a raw photo editor. And so you can make global changes to raw photos. So let's get started. So the first thing that raw therapy tells you to do is check the white balance. So this was a fairly sunny day. I normally shoot with just camera um, selected auto, just auto white balance, and that normally works out pretty well. Uh, this model's skin is quite light, um, so uh, we will fix that a little bit later. Um, we can just kind of see if some of these other auto modes change anything. So this was kind of a daylight, and so that made it a little bit more blue. The, it was cloudy at some times. That might be a little bit better. Um, but you know, going back to the camera, you can see that the camera auto white balance and cloudy were pretty much the same. Um, and just to see, raw therapy also does have an auto setting and that looks more like sunny. Uh, but I'm going to stick with what the camera chose. I think that looks pretty close to reality. Uh, and it also is a little bit warmer, which will help with her skin tones. Um, so if you look at um, raw therapy's guide, the next thing to do is to look at exposure. In this window, you can see the histogram right up here, and the histogram shows uh, illumination in this gray, and then it shows each channel, the red, green, blue, uh, as well as a yellow, um, different channels. And if you wanna see each individual channel in monochrome, you can enable them here, as well as uh, just gray monochrome with that. Uh, one other tool up here is there's a focus mask to see where uh, where the camera was focusing. And again, this was a 1.2 lens at wide open 1.2. So the depth of field is very, very shallow. Uh, it picked up on her face, which is good. Some shots that I took, her hair was in front of her. And so the camera actually locked on her hair instead of her eyes. Here, I think it did a pretty good job. Um, that's good. Um, some other tools to be aware of. Here's a, a highlight clipping uh, indicator. So if you were to bump the exposure way up, it would, it would clip just about everything out. So we're not actually going to do that, just showing that that's what happens if you bump the exposure up and what that tool does. It shows what is being clipped in the highlights. There's also a black clipping. So you can see, uh, so in the highlight clipping, whatever is clipped turns black. With the black clipping, whatever is completely clipped out in black turns white. So her pose and then, uh, some of the areas in the back are clipped. I'm not too worried about either of those as they stand. Um, we might start by kind of pressing some highlights. That again. Okay, so that's a little better on her skin, um, bringing some of that clipping down. Now we can disable that. If we wanted to, uh, if you wanted to uh, try and get some of the black clipping, we can bring the shadows up. I'm not too worried about it based on where they are, uh, but that might help a little bit. So we're going to leave we disable that tool to see what changes have been made. We're going to leave it enabled. 
Um, so basically that is also sort of reducing the contrast. Another tool that is here that can help with that, if you want to use it, is this dynamic range compression. That kind of flattens the image a little bit. Um, and so if you really crank it up, you can see it really, really flattens it. But I don't like the look of that. Um, but it is a tool that's available if you need it. Sometimes that can help if the dynamic range is a little bit too high or if things are just... Uh, contrast is way way too high i'm gonna leave that tool disabled and actually over here is the history of the tools that you have used i'm just gonna make raw therapy kind of forget that that tool was ever even enabled by clicking on this shadows highlights uh, right above where dynamic range compression was enabled and so then that way uh, the way th raw therapy works, as I understand it, is it actually applies the tools in the order that they're shown here in the history matters. Um, for example, one of the last things you want to do if you shoot at high ISOs, you'll get a lot of noise. There are these two noise reduction tools. Uh, the guides for raw therapy say to use those last. So um, we don't really have any noise because we shot at ISO 100 here, as you can see. Um, and you can also zoom way in and see there's just really no noise to speak of. So we're not going to need those. Um, but it is a tool that's available if you're shooting low light and need to pull up your ISO. And it works really, really well in raw therapy. I'll do another guide at some point to show how that works and how well it works. One other tool that I really like is this LAB adjustments. Uh, what this is is lightness, contrast, and chromaticity. Um, instead of using the saturation slider up here, I like to start um, with this LAB chromaticity, which is basically uh, similar to the saturation. So if we pump that up, getting her dress to pop, some of these flowers to really pop, and her skin starts to pop. All right, so now we're going to go back to this color palette. Uh, set of tools. The next thing I like to do is vibrance. So there's a pastel tones slider which we can bump up a little bit uh, just to see how it works and it really makes those those flowers start to pop again and also her dress. Um, we're gonna protect the skin tones which will keep that slider from affecting her skin but in order to make her skin kind of stand out a little bit I like to use this grid or this uh, graph um, and set it to HH. And then, so this is your input color and this is your output color. So what I like to do is I'm gonna bring it down a little bit closer to red. Um, and you can see the effect by going the opposite way and, and yellow. Um, a couple other things that are available. There's, uh, there's cropping and rotation tools here. So um, these I would not apply universally to a set of pictures. I would just apply them for each picture typically. Uh, but you can enable crop if you want to crop. Uh, there's also guides. So if you want thirds, it will pop up for that. You can also change portrait and landscape. So if you wanted to make Portrait, uh, of course, same uh, same ratio, but portrait pretty. So the ratios are locked. You can unlock that and just any arbitrary prop as well. So once you're happy with got, then you. They can right click on the image, processing operation, processing profile operations, and copy. And then for all the images that use the same settings, you could just apply all of them. So we've got a lot of poses, same spot. Right there, you can just do all of them processing operations, paste. Uh, 
All right. So, uh, so now we have applied uh, those same edits of images. 